Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So, of course, the price of energy is too high. It's way too high. It's over $100 a barrel for oil. It's near 5 bucks a gallon for gasoline. It's been an important contributor, though by far not the only contributor, to the 8% inflation rate of the past year. By the way, a new study suggests that the inflation story has added a $5,200 tax on typical American families. So this has got to change. Everybody knows it has to change. Today, Joe Biden, who erroneously continues to blame high energy costs on Vladimir Putin and American fossil fuel companies, today the president came up with a new gimmick, kind of an adult toy. It's called SPRO, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. He announced today his administration will release one million barrels of oil daily from SPRO for up to six months. Oil prices fell $7 to around 100 bucks today on the news. Stocks fell about 250 points. Let's see where the stocks ended. Yeah, it's at 221. Anyway, Mr. Biden says that this SPRO activity is going to cut gasoline prices 10 to 35 cents. I'm going to take the under on that. We will see. But let me give you some numbers to show you why I am totally skeptical about this. First of all, the U.S. Strategic Reserve currently has 568 million barrels. It could sell as much as 4.4 million in the first few days, that according to the U.S. Energy Information Agency. But bear in mind that the sell rate will slow as the oil cavern supply diminish. But let's just work off a million barrels a day. That would be 30 million barrels a month, which would be 180 million barrels over six months. All right, stay with me on this. Hang on. Hang on. Now, the world supply and demand for oil balances at roughly 100 million barrels a day. So that would come to 3 billion barrels per day per month, which in turn would be 18 billion barrels per day for six months. So Mr. Biden's gimmick plan would add 180 million barrels per day compared to a world supply of 18 billion over the six-month period we're talking about. Kind of like spitting in the wind, isn't it? A pea in a pot, a pebble in the ocean. We'll see if there's any additional falling oil price effect after today's drop on the news. But I think it's doubtful. Now, mindful, the oil reserve is supposed to be there to protect against major national disruptions in supply, either from huge natural disasters or, more importantly, a war. It's really a national security tool. It is not meant to manipulate oil or gasoline prices in the short run. Now, today, of course, Biden blamed Vladimir Putin and oil companies for the high price of oil and gasoline. Of course he does. It's what we love about him. It's what he does. He is consistently selling falsehoods. It's actually the only consistency he has in an otherwise incoherent and bewildering policy approach, but I digress. Consider the following. On his very first day in office, Joe Biden canceled the Keystone XL pipeline ended Anwar drilling in Alaska and instituted a phony metric called the social cost of carbon, which pretends to capture upstream production costs and downstream consumer uses measured over centuries. Think of it. It can't be done. And this whole jihad against fossil fuels throws a wet blanket over the entire oil and gas industry, which was, by the way, not only the best and most efficient in the world, but the most affordable in the world and the cleanest in the world. U.S. carbon emissions have been falling for years. Then came the Biden regulatory octopus, with tentacles reaching everywhere to stop fossil fuels. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, has essentially banned new pipelines. The Interior Department has stopped drilling on federal lands. The Energy Department has frozen LNG export projects. The EPA has reinstituted burdensome standards for Endangered Species, Clean Water Act, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act, NEPA permitting reform has been thrown out the window. And even now, with a so-called NATO task force to supply more LNG to Europe, the fine print of that document insists on the same regulatory framework that will get the U.S. towards net zero carbon emissions in eight years. 
These are all reasons why U.S. oil production is a million and a half barrels below its peak in early 2020. All right, today, President Biden could resist his usual jihadist attack against America's great fossil companies. Take a listen to what he said. I'm calling for a use it or lose it policy. Congress should make companies pay fees on wells on federal leases they haven't used in years and acres of public land they're hoarding without production. I love this. So goes Biden's fatwa against fossil fuels. So let me get this right. Even though the oil companies have leases, the regulatory octopus, remember, FERC, Energy, Interior, EPA, SEC, and Federal Reserve, won't provide the permits or the pipelines or the financing for these projects. It's a classic bait and switch. Uncle Sam gave them the leases, but then said, uh uh, no permits, no pipelines, no funding. So we're going to impose a fee on you. That fee, by the way, comes on top of the 11 individual tax hikes targeting the fossil fuel companies in Biden's budget. And those come on top of the tax attacks already on corporations, small businesses, capital gains, and confiscatory wealth through unrealized capital gains. To be clear, to be very clear, Inflation is being driven by big government socialist deficit spending financed by Federal Reserve money printing. The inflation rate has moved up from under 2 percent to over 7 percent before Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. But inside this inflation surge, the high cost of energy has played a major role. It has undermined our economic security at home and it has damaged our national security abroad. It plays right into the hands of the war criminal and crook Vladimir Putin. Gasoline prices jumped 40 percent before Putin went into the Ukraine. Oil prices jumped nearly 70 percent before. These anti-fossil regulatory policies are a self-inflicted wound. We are never going to replace oil and gas. Let's face that fact honestly. Never. The Bank of America, by the way, has estimated that achieving net zero carbon emissions would cost $150 trillion over 30 years. That's an annual cost of $5 trillion alone. Think of it as a tax. Of course, inflation would be turbocharged with that. Millions of jobs lost. The economy would sink. America would be vastly weaker. This is a price we do not have to pay. So I'll just say save America. Drill, drill, drill. The cavalry is coming.